Hi everybody, I'm Darren Jeffrey with Vertical Art Dance, and today we're here to talk to you about your carabiner. Okay, so the carabiner, there's two different types, steel and aluminum. Both of these are more commonly referred to as a connector. Also in the connector family, we've got some screw gate length. We've got the large quick link, the small quick link, the delta link, and the tri link. These are all considered connectors. So when we talk about carabiners, let's think of them, think of them initially as just connectors. Now let's talk about the pros and cons of these connectors. Great. The aluminum ones, hey, these things are holding about 5,000 pounds when they're used absolutely perfectly, meaning the material is not overloaded out away from the spine of the carabiner that the material is seated very comfortably right against the spine when you look at this particular setup here that's what we're talking about figure eight is backed over towards the spine the swivel is trapped by the design up against the spine so the majority of the strength in this particular connector is on just this one leg right up the spine here we take a look at an oval carabiner, comparing it to a D-shaped carabiner or a large HMS or pear style. So we're looking at the oval carabiner and we're using a soft link in it right now. The oval carabiner excels when you bring hardware, especially fat hardware. When you bring hardware into the mix, the idea is that the hardware on both edges, this silver edge here and this silver edge here, that the hardware will sit symmetrically parallel with the spine and the gate. That's why we're still using oval carabiners, even though they're a few hundred pounds weaker. So this is a nice thick piece of aluminum, 6,000 series, it's a half inch thick. Is it gonna sit symmetrically inside of a D-shaped carabiner? Yeah, probably not. Not perfectly, but it'll be really obvious when you put it into the piece of gear. I said earlier so you can see how the plates the side plates are not parallel with the spine and that's detrimental that'll cause a very uneven loading of the uh, of this particular piece of equipment kind of an off-axis tilt and all that does is it introduces when your gear is tilted into the carabiner it introduces torque into uh, from the nose up the spine and they, these carabiners essentially just twist right apart uh, so that's what we're seeing here so that's one reason why the oval is still a major player in the rigging world uh, is because of its compatibility with the wider types of hardware that are on the market. Okay. You'll notice on the gate, this has an automatically locking gate. We call it an auto locker. It's supposed to automatically lock and would resist vibration during use. So if there was a lot of vibration going through the connector from the dancer or from the, the, the stage, we're not worried about that vibrating open versus a screw gate, which has to manually be screwed and checked to see that it's locked. Uh, these things can be tightened and be locked in an open position and vibration can cause gate flutter. And you can hear that. Gate flutter in this case only needs to be just enough to where the locking mechanism is disengaged. You'll see an open gate rating on this is only seven kilonewtons. Hey, that's 1,500 pounds. Two people can easily generate 1,500 pounds in a decent balance. Take a look at these two steel carabiners. Both of these are auto-locking. However, these are, they have different positioning. So this particular gate is a two-position gate, meaning it takes two functions to open. One, two. This is a three-position. It takes three functions to open. I'm going to one, two, three. So that's the difference here. How many positions is this? It's three. How many positions is this? Hey, it's a screw lock. You gotta watch those. Great. When we rig with screw locks, you make sure they're upside down so any vibration will encourage the gate to keep the carabiner closed. Also talk about cross-loading. Whether you're using steel, which is around 10,000 pounds on its major axis, or aluminum, which is around 5,000 pounds on its major axis, both of them 
will be cut down by about 70% in strength if you cross load them. So we have to rig in a, in a way to avoid cross loading at all costs. We talk about your carabiner being used in a normal axis along its major axis. Now let's talk about overloading the carabiner, putting too much material in it. For example, this is a, this is a classic example of an overloaded carabiner. Even if you flip the carabiner to its wide basket, way over 50% of the material is past the halfway point of the carabiner. We want to see all of our material in these carabiners tucked nicely back against the spine. Just because it's a large carabiner doesn't mean you can put more stuff in it. It actually weakens it. The larger the carabiner, the more leverage you have. Modern day rigging solution for this old, old problem is to take two of these 19 inch sterling rope hollow blocks and tie them into a friction hitch known as a prusik. This is a three wrap prusik, one per each tail. When I connect the two tails now into this carabiner, you'll see, hey, I'm way inside the halfway point with both my tails. Now, I still have a problem with this. The example is how the difference between two tails looking like this versus one tail completely sandwiched full of material. So looking at that again, the problem that I have with it is that once the dancers are climbing up into the fabric and the fabric starts to spread, we create a hellacious three-way load and we need to do something about that. So we have uh, another vi video coming up in this segment that talks about three-way loading because uh, there's some other rigging scenarios where three-way loading is a huge problem. It's a, it's a quiet, secret force that'll sneak up on you. So uh, take time to watch that video as well. But you see what the point is, is getting the material inside the halfway point of this carabiner for good, safe rigging. When a carabiner breaks, it actually twists apart. It doesn't just pull apart, it torques apart. And this particular arm becomes a leverage arm. And then when, when the loaded material gets way out past the spine, it has the ability to start cranking and pulling on this and torquing these carabiners apart. So actually the larger carabiners are easier to overload because people think, oh, big carabiner, I can put more stuff in it. Huge mistake. Gak flex or span set is also considered an overload for a carabiner, even a steel carabiner. It's a mistake that you can get away with just because the carabiner is rated at 10,000 pounds. Look at how narrow this basket is. The material, it's not level. This bar is not level. It's promoting the material to sit in the final three quarters of an inch. And when you put span set into a carabiner, once again, you're way out past the halfway point. Even if you try to crunch and compress it, that's an overloaded carabiner. This is a mistake that a lot of riggers make and they get away with it because we're not using, humans can only handle 1,500 to 2,000 pounds of shock load. So we could take these carabiners and overload them and make the mistake of that and still get away with it. And that's the margin of safety that the manufacturers have rigged in or have engineered into the braking strengths. That's why the industry says these things should be about 5,000 pounds to begin with because there's a lot of misuse. So let's keep the material close to the spine. If you can't, then you want to start getting into a different style of connector. We're not talking about a carabiner. Carabiners were designed as portable, lightweight, fast connectors for rock climbing, parachuting, and the sailing industry. Aerial and theatrical rigging, it's a whole different world. You're walking into a building most of the time. You can bring with you on a cart with wheels anything that you can fathom, gear-wise. You're not just stuck with equipment that's going to hang from your harness. So let's take a look at these connectors. The Delta Link four-way. These things can be loaded up, pulled on in multiple directions. You could even get as crazy as to take a very large rated Malian Rapide or large Quick Link and compress your span set into it like that as well. These things are strong, but they're also incredibly durable. A carabiner is strong, but it's not that durable. It's weak like this. It's weak like that. It's weak like this. There's so many different ways that a carabiner is actually weak. Almost to the point where the carabiner itself cre can create the illusion of safety. Just because I'm clipped in, I feel like I'm safe. That's because of that illusion. We don't want to overload those carabiners. 
Okay, so overloading a carabiner, and now we're going to talk about a three-way load or off-axis load. Okay, and the other piece that we need to talk about, uh, we've talked about overloading carabiners, we've talked about uh, the proper loading of carabiners, we've also, also talked about some of the components, the spine, the gate, the mechanism of the gate. Now we need to talk about three-way loading. This is an even bigger problem than overloading uh, because the way the physics supply the force into the connector, it actually compounds the load depending on the angle of the uh, three-way load. So let's take a look here. Uh, you take a look at this hoop, you'll see we've got two legs under tension that are coming into a single connector. From that single connector, presumably, we are hanging something a sling, a rope, a swivel, something. That's the third leg. So now we have one, two, three. We have three load strands coming out of one connector. You have to use a connector that's designed for that. So a couple of ways to go about doing that. The tri-link works well. This is what you're trying to avoid. This is, hor this is absolutely horrible. Uh, performers, if you look up and see your overhead rigging, has a carabiner, whether it's auto locking or screw locking, but it's experiencing a three-way load, you have to demand that this be replaced with something that can uh, afford to handle a three-way load. So no carabiner, not even if they're steel. Just because this is 10,000 pounds stronger than this doesn't mean that, you're, that, this, that, that this is the way it's designed to be used. This, if this is used as a three-way load and it doesn't break, You've made a mistake and you've just gotten away with it. So understand that. The tri link, the delta link works great for these three way loads, especially if you're going up into span set or multiple directions coming, coming in. You can also squeeze it into one of these large quick links, repeats. Please make sure that these, they're heavily rated. It doesn't, rating means it has multiple uh, descriptions written on it. Who the manufacturer is, what it breaks at, and then the different loads, including cross-loading on most of the new ones now. It'll even give you a cross-loading indicator. Same thing on the tri-links. Don't buy these. If you buy the small ones that are, look like the hardware store ones, they should come with some packaging that talks about the literature and exactly what this is. This is a life safety connector. It's not from the hardware store. Same thing with this one. Buy them from a reputable company. So that's something to understand is a three-way load. No good. All right, let's take a look at a couple of other pieces here. Doing this. This is borderline. This right currently this would not be a three-way load and I would be just barely within saying that this is properly loaded. But what I'm worried about is once the rig starts getting used, is the dancer, is the performer going to spread these silks and start creating a three-way load? So in its resting position, this looks like a good idea, but I'm worried that, hey, we could start seeing a three-way load. So one way to quickly get around that, again, is to use a piece of gear that's designed for a three-way load. In this scenario, the base of this large swivel can handle a three-way load, just like so. This is an appropriate use of the carabiners and an appropriate application for a three-way load. Take a look at the hoop, the same thing. Two carabiners, each coming in to their own swivel. Flip these and lock them. That's an appropriate th use of a carabiner for a three-way load. Now there's other ways to rig this. I'm just using this as a demonstration. There's a hundred ways to rig these things. However, a whole lot of them are mistakes that people are getting away with and sometimes not getting away with. So I'm using this as an example. Let's take a look over here on the truss. You'll see a similar situation with the way these two slings come in when we're rigging off the truss. It's creating a three-way load. I want to put a pulley in here. 
This is a perfect application for a tri link. You look down here at this GAC flex. I got two, one loop of GAC flex or span set coming into a delta link. I don't want to put a big carabiner in here because I'm overloading it. And I also know from here I could move on and I could join in other legs. And then if I wanted to eliminate the carabiners altogether for the cleanest application, the least amount of links in the chain, the less links in the chain, the less links in the chain to break. So something like this would be a wonderful application for the delta link with a massive amount of material coming into it, more than what a carabiner is designed to handle. And then in this case, two friction hitches holding a silk in hammock mode. Good deal.